Logan Commanders. This is again Commander Oroderin, and we are now back for a textbook type kill of a Thargoid Basilisk. The Basilisk is one step up from the Thargoid Cyclops that we've seen before, and if you're interested in the basic mechanics of Thargoid combat, I do recommend that you see the Thargoid Cyclops textbook kill. In this video I will not be focusing on the basic mechanics, but rather I will comment the fight and point out differences to the fight with the Cyclops. The main difference between the Cyclops and the Basilisk is that the Basilisk is significantly faster than the Cyclops and it also has a higher damage output and therefore poses somewhat more of a threat. I have also made a minor change to the build and that is that instead of using a Xeno scanner, I have here re-equipped my shutdown field neutralizer, which I usually have equipped in order to deal with high predictions. It is not necessary for this fight, however, so you can go with the scanner if you prefer to do so, or install an extra heatsink launcher. For this fight, we have come back to the Pleiades, and the location is the stunning Teigita system, which as you will see, is a rather beautiful system to fight in. However, it's pretty bright, so you might have problems seeing stuff. But as you'll see, it's perfectly possible to still do pretty well in terms of Thargoid combat, but I felt that my aim was a little bit off in comparison to usual during this run. However, as I said, the Teigita system is quite beautiful, and I do recommend that you visit. With that said, let's jump into the fight. So we are here dropping into a guaranteed threat level 6 non-human signal source where we will find the Thargoid Basilisk. And since we don't have a scanner equipped, I immediately proceed to, to tap it with the beam laser and build some distance in order to be able to flag down the swarm. Now the Basilisk, as I said, is significantly faster than the Cyclops, so we need to keep track of the distance to it at all times. Although we can't see it here, because I again I have no scanner equipped, the swarm has a size of 64, which is twice the size of the Cyclops swarm. But the mechanics are the same. So the swarm is down, we start beaming in order to cool down and prepare our attack run by setting pips to 0 to 4. And the basilisk is a bit harder to orbit than the cyclops because of its speed and it will take significantly longer to exert than the cyclops because of additional hit points. The Basilisk also has a much longer reload phase, so it's the longest reload phase of any interceptor. So it will take some time here until I can get back on target. But eventually the heart goes down and we boost away from the Basilisk. The Basilisk is now in lightning attack mode, so I need to build some distance here. Due to the speed, I'm not going to be able to build too much distance. So I keep boosting and turn around. And I managed to build around 6 kilometers of distance. So we start beaming it. This is, again, two reasons, taking down the shield and staying cool. Now due to its speed it's eventually going to catch up and we are doing to perform a flyby maneuver which is just that we boost in the opposite direction of the basilisk's vector and it starts deploying the swarm so we're going to build some distance here. We check the distance to both the interceptor and to the swarm. Here I judged that I had some time to put a few flags in the swarm, but that the interceptor was pretty close, so I do another flyby 
and use the basilisk speed against it. It's going to take some time for it to change its vector, which means that this is my opportunity to, to build distance. The swarm, however, reacts much faster and maintains a distance of around 3 kilometers, which makes this ideal to deal with the swarm. So I can flag the swarm in relative peace from the interceptor. And once the interceptor gets back into range, I can start beaming it again. Now I don't have a Xeno scanner equipped, so I cannot directly see the shield level of the basilisk. However, you can see in the bottom here that in the target position, when I beam the interceptor, you see the blue pings of the laser. That means that the shield is still up. So I can use this to judge when I can go in for an attack run again. When the blue pings disappear, it's just going to be time. Here are the pings again. And there is the disappearance of the shield. So I'm now ready to attack again. So we start building the orbit. And go in for our second attack run. Now keep an eye on where the basilisk's uh, main cannon fire uh, is, is, is going, because that will somehow tell you about how well you're doing in terms of the orbit. If the fire is getting closer to you, your orbit is, this, is about to decay and you need to do something about it. But this was a fairly... Uh, a fairly easy attack run in some sense. I got the heart down pretty quickly and so since it's not changing us, uh, since it's not uh, chasing us with the lightning attack, uh, we can just suit it down with the beam laser while keeping cold and waiting for the next swarm to be deployed while also avoiding the caustic missile attack. And as you can see, we're able here to build significant distance due to the basilisk standing still during the swarm deployment. The swarm is within th three kilometers and the basilisk is quite far away. So we have some ample time here to flag down the swarm. Again, when the swarm goes to reload like this, uh, it's very difficult to hit it. So just double check the distance to the basilisk and wait for the swarm to come back. So with the swarm down, we can again focus on the basilisk and getting his shields down while remaining out of, well, generally out of its cannon range and when we are within cannon range to make sure that we are staying cold or that we are under protection of silent running. also admire the amazing view of these rings. It's really something. So as you can see, using these flyby maneuvers is rather easy to actually build significant distance to this basilisk. Once again, within six kilometers, we start beaming and we see that the shield is now down. So we prepare the next attack run. The Basilisk also has five hearts in total. And that means since this is the third heart, um, the special attack that we're going to avoid after this 
attack run is again going to be caustic missiles. So once the heart is down, we again start beaming and keep at the distance of around one kilometer when we get there. Just waiting for the swarm to be deployed. Pips one for one in order to recharge the systems capacitor. The systems capacitor is back to full, so put pips back to zero for two. Swarm deploying, boost once to build distance. Boost twice because it's a basilisk. And turn around to flag down the swarm. So as you can see here, the basilisk was even 10 kilometers away when we were done flacking down the swarm. So it's really possible to build some distance even though it's a basilisk. And we again resume our beaming to aid in the destruction of the shield here. So during flybys, I just boosted once here and I let the momentum carry me while I keep facing the basilisk and working the shield with the beam laser. And the same thing again, because the shields are not down yet. One boost, the basilisk momentum works against it, and we build significant distance. So the shields are down and we go in for the fourth heart. So just remember that the special attack that we're going to avoid after this heart is the shutdown field. So the basilisk here went for a reload exactly as, as, as I was coming in for, for the attack run and therefore boosted to get a bit closer. But otherwise the idea is the same, orbit the basilisk Exert the heart and then take it out with a hopefully a little bit better aim than what I have here. So I am now out of heat sinks, which means I'm going to have to refill heat sinks before the next attack run. So I can actually stop beaming for a while here as soon as I do this fast enough to keep below 20% heat, it's perfectly fine to start synthesis. The swarm is out, so we boost past. So here I took a stray shot from the swarm, uh, which means that my synthesis was cancelled. So eventually I will have to restart it. Swarm goes to reload. I have sufficient distance to the interceptor. 
So I restart this instances. The swarm is down, synthesis completes, so I can now focus on the interceptor. Again, the flyby is just one boost, and then focusing the beam on the interceptor. So here I decided to actually synth another set of heat sinks after refilling flak. I did this because I felt that my aim had been rather poor during this run, and, and I did not want to run out of heat sinks. As we will see later, it turned out I didn't actually need it, but you should never go cheap when it comes to synthesizing things that you need or might need. Because coming to regret it is worse than having to farm the materials again. So the shield is down and we go in for the last heart. Now, unlike the Cyclops, the Basilisk is more difficult to get down in the short period of time after the last heart uh, is taken out. So instead I'm just going to beam to stay cold and perform the entire cycle once again and come in for the final kill once I have taken down the swarm and the shields are down again. Now I could, in principle, avoid the swarm in this case, but I had 100% hull still and I wanted to conserve that, so you might as well take down the swarm. So again, a few stray shots from the swarm, but still 100% hull. This kind of highlights how little the swarm actually damages a shieldless ship. With the swarm down, we're just waiting now for the shield to drop in order to just go in and finish this basilisk off. The shield goes down, pips to 0 to 4, and we're coming in now for the final kill. Build the orbit, and fire away. And that's how you defeat the basilisk.